All right, welcome to Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. Uh, so glad that you all are joining us. So glad that uh, you all are just here tonight to hear this word. Um, we have something special for you all tonight, just like every night. Um, but what we want to do is, uh, you know, we have uh, been in that vein of seducing spirits. And during that time when our uh, chief shepherd was uh, giving us that understanding of seducing spirits and just how, you know, some people are even walking in deception and how to be released from that and where it comes from. You know, uh, we're going to stay in the area of that same vein. And we're also going to deal with uh, you know, what just passed was uh, Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. So what we're going to do is um, we're not going to stray away from what we're doing because, you know, as those who are connected to uh, the Holy Spirit, the governor, you, you know, we always want to flow. We never want to break away and do this and do that. You know, we always want to follow the Holy Spirit. We're to be led by the Holy Spirit. We're not uh, we're not trying to lead the Holy Spirit into doing this or doing it or what we want to do. So we're saying that, you know, like I said, we're going to stay in the same vein. And what we're going to get into uh, tonight, I'll go ahead and show the title. We're going to get into the intent of Halloween, the Sam Hain Festival. Uh, and maybe, you know, there are some things that you know about it. Maybe there's some things that you don't know about it, but uh, hopefully that you all will get an understanding that will help you um, just see why it's so important to go back to the origin of things. Why it's so important to get an understanding for yourself when it comes to uh, just not to receiving things without checking them out. All right. So without... Um, getting into too much of the teaching because I know I'll do that. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing we're going to look at is understanding origin. This really should be understanding the importance of origin. Okay, so when we go back to the origin of something, the first thing that we're looking to do is get an understanding of it. All right, we don't want to get uh, go back to the origin just to <laughs> basically say that I know this, you know, that the purpose of doing it, the purpose of going back is so that we can use it to understand what to do, how to do it, when to do it. All right. So origin contains the original idea or, you know, another uh, term for that is precept. All right. And we've learned that, you know, in the six stages of conformity, you first have to start with the precept, the original idea. All right. And, you know, this plays a big part in dealing with Halloween uh, because, you know, so many people want to just celebrate. It. You know, it's just for fun is uh, we just enjoying it. Why, you know, why have you um, come to, you know, people say, why have you come to take away our fun? Why? Why are you trying to take away what we're doing? You know, to me, that sounds like uh, one of the demons that we read about in scripture. Um, <laughs> when Yeshua showed up, that's what the demon told him. You know, Yeshua, why you come to uh, take away what we're doing here? You know, why you come to take away, you know, different things that we got going on? So we have to realize that there are doctrine of demons, things that are keeping people bound in order to uproot those ideas. And, you know, it's not just people who are. Um, not born again, you know, people who are living in that unregenerated state. There are, are people who are born again, who are still participating in doctrine of demons, okay? And so what has to happen is they have to be uh, delivered. You know, when Yeshua was um, delivering people from, from sickness, disease, from, um, uh, what was it? When, when people were, were demon possessed, he would go uh, into synagogues, Okay, so these were uh, people who were trying to keep the faith. All right. So what we have to do when we get back to the original idea of preset, we're, we're trying to capture something, you know, we're trying to grab hold of something so that we can get uh, the idea of how to do it. All right. So when it comes to a product, let's read this uh, slide. Um, the next point here, always go back to the manufacturer for the manual or instructions on the product and its design. All right. Uh, an example here is toying with smaller vehicles. So one thing about it is that uh, I've seen people, you know, we live in, in Memphis. So you see a lot of things <laughs> on these roads in Memphis. Uh, and one thing that you will see is uh, I've seen people in like Impalas uh, towing other cars, you know, that they, I've seen people put, um, what was it called, a hitch on the back of a car and pull in the car. That's not what that car was designed to do. And if they keep doing that, you know, they can mess up the engine, the transmission, uh, eventually, you, you know, mess up the, um, what's that, mess up the, uh, I can't even get it out, uh, that rear axle. So 
what <laughs> that's not what that vehicle was was designed to do you know you have to have a vehicle that was designed to towing or uh, for towing let me say that uh same thing with because what you're doing with that vehicle you're putting stress on it that it that it did not designed to have you're putting more stress on the vehicle than it was designed to receive okay uh those vehicles weren't made for those harsh conditions of towing all right and so same thing with stress on the body our bodies weren't des designed for stress okay if you go if you look at it you know they talk about good stress bad stress but any stress uh any doctor if they do a physical exam your body after you've gone under stress uh you'll see uh sickness you'll see disease you'll see uh, different things that are going on in the body that are putting a person in a state to need medication to correct what's going on. All right. And that is a result of stress on the body because our bodies were not designed for stress. And even if you go in, some people are sick, you know, they ask the doctor for the diagnosis. And sometimes the doctor start asking you questions about your life and they will give you uh, the verdict or um, I can't think of what the medical term is, but they'll tell you that uh, your diagnosis, they'll tell you that your diagnosis is stress, you know? And, and the thing is our bodies weren't designed for stress, okay? So we have to get back to the uh, original design of our bodies. What were our bodies designed to do? You know, if they weren't designed for stress, you know, how are we supposed to use our bodies? All right, same thing with the vehicles. How am I supposed to use this vehicle? If this is a smaller vehicle, that's to take me from point A to point B, all right? So we have to get back to the original idea, the origin. This is why it's so, so important. Again, this is what we're getting to. And this is why these examples are important because we're getting to the importance of origin, all right? That way we can't just throw things off and say, well, I'm gonna just do it this the, the way that I wanna do it. I'm gonna do it this way um that I, I think is right or you know well, i see other people doing it so i'm gonna do it that way all right if you get in a, a place or state of mind like that then what you're doing is you're, you're succumbing to uh indoctrination uh because basically you're accepting ideas without checking them out for yourself you know we, we should check everything all right and it's not going back and searching online for you know what we find truth to be you know that's why we have to define truth but we're going to get to that too so going, uh, keeping on with this, you know, looking at our original design, what we were designed to do as people, you know, let's go back to uh, Bear Sheet Genesis 1 and 26, and I will pull that up. Um, and before, can you all see it? Bear Sheet 126? Thumbs up. Got it. All right. So <laughs> the thing. I, 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 can't, I don't see it yet. Okay. Uh, I got thumbs up from other people. They said they can see it. All right. So um, the thing about uh, Bereshith uh, or Genesis is that um, I used to always question Dr. Larry. Let me say this. I used to always question uh, Dr. Larry because <laughs> my thinking was that um, you know, why is he always going back to Bereshi? Why is he always going back to, uh, then I was saying, why is he always going back to Genesis? Uh, because in my mind, I'm like, you know, there are other scriptures. And, you know, I'm thinking about the Messianic scriptures, you know, why is he focusing more on that? Because, you know, coming out of a Christian religion, you know, all we taught is that, you know, they say Jesus, 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 you know, that's all that matters. So I'm like, why is he, he, he going, excuse me, why is he keep, <laughs> why does he keep going back to bear a sheath. I'm like, you know, that what about, you know, um going to, to uh, other scriptures in the in the Tanakh? And I'm just like, if he, you know, in my mind, I'm just like, if he's sticking to these, you know, how are we gonna get to the other stuff? But <laughs> that's why I understand now, because once you get the understanding, once you get that precept, uh, if um you have the wrong precept or wrong idea, and then you try to understand the rest of uh i'll say the word or uh the scriptures then what you're doing is you can become a prisoner of a misconception that's why it's so important to have uh understanding of the precept or the original idea so that way we don't become a prisoner of a misconception which will taint our ideas and give us a bad philosophy a bad outlook on life our lifestyle uh will be opposite of what the father wants you know all right so getting to Barashi, uh or genesis 1 26 then uh let me pull it up i'm sorry then elohim said let us make mankind in our image and our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground 
So uh, when he said, let us make mankind in our image, he was talking about in his character or his, you know, his integrity. You know, that's how we ought to be. We, we, we have or possess that integrity. Uh, script, scripture says, be holy. Uh, because Elohim is holy or the same all the time and integrated. That's how we are to be. We're not to have a double mind or appear one way and be another, you know. So that's how he created us in the beginning. And in his likeness, um, what we are, we possess dominion, you know, uh, or we possess dominion or Adam did before the fall. So now that we are born again, we've been put back in right standing. Now we've been re redeemed to our position as delegated kings. Now we possess dominion again. All right. Now it's up to us to learn our rights so that we can use that dominion to overcome the world, you know, just as Yeshua did. All right. So that's the idea that we should have, even when we're looking at scripture. And what we're looking at, uh, when you're looking at the Tanakh, the thing that you'll see is that what those people did, they did not have a regenerated spirit. You know, um, what they had, that they were in a dead state to where um, the, the Holy Spirit was on them, but not in them. All right. So what we have today, we actually have the Holy Spirit. If you're born again, uh, we actually have the Holy Spirit within us. All right. We have the governor in us who is conforming us to the kingdom of heaven, that culture, all right? So now we're being changed, not from the outside in, but from the inside out, all right? So what is happening with us is that we're changing to fit that culture of heaven, and it doesn't start with us succumbing to the ideas of hell, all right? So what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that a lot of ideas of the world are not, uh, the world has separated itself for the majority, from Elohim, from the, the kingdom of heaven culture. When Adam uh, got in that, uh, when he, he declared declaration of independence, what happened was, you see, with the offspring, with Cain, he killed uh, his brother Abel, all right? We see that uh, rebellion, or another term that people use as sin, set in, and, and that's what happened. The first thing happened is uh, um, you had a brother kill another brother, all right? So <laughs> what we have today is a lot of the world's ideas or concepts that want to afflict the minds of people. So what we have to do is be able to examine ourselves from, again, looking on the inside and then living out of the inside and being a reflection of that in the world. So that goes back to living out of our born again spirits, all right? So our spirits are perfect. They're just like Elohim. And guess what our spirits possess? Our spirits possess, let me get it up here, truth, okay? So unraveling the origin unravels the truth, all right? So when we're looking at example here is mystery. So when many people, uh, you know, you may watch mysteries or even if you're looking at uh, crimes, you know, uh, I know a big television show was First 48. They were always, always trying to figure out what happened. And the thing is that they never, you can never rely just on a witness because a witness uh, is someone who saw what happened. Now, there are witnesses who can give great accounts, all right? There are witnesses who, who can tell you exactly uh, what happened. But in instances of crimes that are happening every day, who they're really trying to get the answer from is either the victim or the uh, offender. And if they can get the offender to plead guilty or the victim to uh, state their case, then what they are able to do is unravel the truth of what really happened, all right? And the only way to do that, they're going back to who the crime was, uh, who it originally happened between, all right? Uh, because right here, um, do I have it up? Yeah, I got it up. Because truth is the original source, okay? If you try to, it's like um, when you're playing, you know, we play telephones <laughs> as kids. You know, you tell somebody something and they tell the next person, they tell the next person, they tell the next person. Uh, when you get down to it, uh, you don't actually get um, what was originally said, all right? So we're not here to live, and you know, that's actually an example of translators. So we're not here to live by hands of, of translators, but we're here to get back to the original source, all right? And um, the thing about um, getting back to the original source, we understand that, you know, our original source or creator is Elohim. And the thing is, is that many people, um, they will get up and start teaching. You see a lot of, uh, especially in the, excuse me, in the black community, a lot of like Pan-Africans, hoteps, uh, you know, they're given all these things because they talk about, um, what is it, uh, Akabu, called Africa being the, 
the motherland, but they want to say that what that gives them the right basically to hold the keys or the truth to to life itself. And so then you see them teaching about a, a lot of life or what's going on. All right. So all created beings and all creation come from the creator. So the thing is, oh, let me get it up. I'm sorry. Uh, where is it? Here it is. All created beings and all creation come from the creator. So um, here we see that living beings, let's go to the next one, living beings and creation are not the, the source of truth, but the product of truth. All right. So we are a product of who Elohim created in the earth. And so apart from truth, apart from our creator, you know, if you don't go back to that manual to see what we were originally designed to do, it's like a, a cell phone. If somebody, you know, like my kids pick up cell phones and the first thing they want to do is watch a video or play a game. All right. So without actually understanding what that phone was designed to do, we can never un fully understand what we're uh, supposed to do with it and how it's actually supposed to, a cell phone can help make your life easier because of the convenience. So um, we can't see exactly how we're supposed to live if we're trying to create our own ideas from other uh, products of truth rather than going back to the source of truth. And one instance of a product of truth is those who are teachers of religion, all right? And what they're trying to do is use uh, certain ideas that may contain truth, but they're, with religion, it boxes it in. It boxes up uh, truth and it doesn't give you that full extent of full understanding. And when I'm saying religion, what I'm meaning is, is the mainline stream like Christianity, um, even, you know, other religions. Uh, well, I tell you what, somebody give me the four main religions. Uh, Christianity, Buddhism, uh, is, um, Muslim, Islamic. Islam. Judaism and Christianity. Okay. Right. Uh, Ju Judaism, uh, Buddhism, uh, Christianity, and Islam. Those are the four main religions. So uh, one thing about those religions, you, you know, they were created. And then, you know, the, the main one that we want to get into is uh, just Christianity, because so many people don't believe it's a religion. And that's actually a misconception. All right. And so that's what we have to be careful of is not to fall at the hand, hands of those. And we have to get to, to the origin of where even Christianity came from. And many of us know how it was created coming from that uh, Roman emperor, Constantine, who uh, at the time when he created the Council of Nicaea, they were the ones who canonized the Bible. They decided who would keep certain uh, books because that's what Bible means, book of books. And we knew that they decided what, excuse me, they would use and which ones they would. All right, not the Holy Spirit, you know, the one, the one who is true, the one who is the guy into truth. You know, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. It was the Council of Nicaea. It was the Roman emperor. And they defined, you know, they changed the names, defined the, or tried to define the culture of the Bible by, you know, having those um, English or, you know, some of them Latin names. So that's what we have today. You know, you have a derivative of uh, Roman Catholicism within Christianity, no matter the denomination. It's all a derivative of Catholicism. We're actually going to see that today when we get into this teaching, uh, as we get more into it. I'm sorry. So we understand the importance of origin now, all right? We understand why we have to get back to the original understanding or get that precept in us, all right? Uh, even when we're looking at what we're doing, you know, uh, because as kids, you know, um, really, you have to look at the parents because, you um, the parents are the one who are teaching the kids. And it's, it's the same thing uh, with the, uh, you know, Elohim, we call him father because he's our source. So if we're teaching our kids and, you know, those kids are looking at their fathers as the source, then what they're receiving from their fathers is um, a pattern. They're receiving a way of living or a way of life. So many times what people have um, as they grow older, they have that pattern. So the pattern that was set for them in their home is a lot of times what they'll copy when they get older. All right. So that, that's why, you know, it's important to uh, even separate our kids from things that are of the world who want, want to drag the kids away and uh, basically put the kids in a state that will give them a pattern opposite of what Elohim wants 
for, you know, uh, born again believers in their lives or ambassadors to represent the kingdom. All right. So now that we understand the importance of origin, we see how important it is. Let's look at the origin of holy days. All right. Um, and I did not say holidays. Uh, and I know I saw somebody say something about, you know, that's where holy days came from. Uh, no, that's where holidays came from, holy days. But my thing is, if that's what they were really called, why would they change? All right. So uh, this first scripture here, Bereshi, Genesis 1 and 14. Can somebody read that for me? And Elohim said, let their let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. All right. And let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. All right. And so uh, if you have been paying attention, then you know that um, to our to the teaching that uh, Dr. Larry has has been doing the extensive teaching, then you know that uh, this word science here is actually uh, spelled in the Madhu Nieder, um, Olive Bob Tav. And we know that's old or making reference to Yeshua and the appointed times. That word in Hebrew is more the, the divine appointed times. All right. So the father, what he did was. When he set up these holy days or holy weeks, uh, the thing that he had in mind that it was for us, you know, um, for us to understand what to do. The tribe of Issachar, they knew the signs of the times and what to do because they understood the divine appointed times. All right. And as Dr. Larry has been teaching, you go back and check it out. We see that. Uh, can anybody tell me what was occurring uh, during the time that Cain killed Abel? Uh, so this time exactly this exactly time. all right and then if we uh really get into these holidays and we see how important they are um and i'll read this one the next one is shemot exodus 23 and 14 three times in the year you have to celebrate a festival unto me and then it goes into those three festivals which we know as unleavened bread uh shavua and sukkot all right um, and this is actually a revelation of Bereshit or, or Genesis 1 and 14. They were already set up because we see it, you know, when, when uh, Cain killed Abel. And then we also see a principle there, which is first fruit. You know, we see the same that we see another principle with Abraham when he was given that tenth or that tithe to Melchizedek. Um, that was a principle of, of the tithe. All right. We see these things before um, they're even the principle, even before they're stated in scripture, you know, plainly. So the, the thing is, is that um, right here, it says these devoted times should still be kept today because what it is, it, they were never to be done away with. They were just revealed. All right. And so what's another one? Um, if you look at, uh, I think it's in Yochanan 10 and I can't, I know it's in chapter 10 where it talks about Yeshua during the time of Hanukkah. And we know that's the hidden feast, all right? So the, <laughs> the thing about it is that these feast days, they, and that was during the time, does anybody know what was occurring during the time of Hanukkah? The conception. Exactly, it was the conception of Yeshua, all right? So um, all these things will reveal what was gonna happen and when it's gonna happen. So that allows us to, like I say, the tribe of Issachar were able to determine uh, what was about to happen? They knew the signs of the times. Uh, I mean, you could have predicted when Yeshua was born. You could have predicted uh, when the Holy Spirit was going to be given because um, of these divine appointed times. Not saying you know when exactly when it was going to happen, but you knew it would occur during this time because the uh, it had already been defined by what the Father had already set up in the beginning. All right, these divine appointed times. And the thing is, is that today. Nowhere in scripture does it does it say that we, you know, we should stop doing it. What happened was that uh, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, headed by Emperor Constantine, separated the uh, saints from the original days. And, you know, there was a mixing and he wanted to help convert and we're going to get to it, help convert those pagans or those who were outside of that religion at the time, that Christian religion and wanted to help be uh, help convert them to it, and, you know. Many times that same thing is still occurring today where Christians want to uh, basically go out and just get soul saved, go out and get soul saved, go out 
and do this, you know, just come to my church. And then, you know, not, not even get so say some of them just want people in their church. As long as you're in their church, they accept you. You, you could be Satan himself. But as long as you are in uh, a person who is a Christian, if you're in that church, they accept everything that you do and that they don't, you know, they question anything. They'll just ask you, keep coming to church. And then, you know, if you're giving, um, if you're giving, you know, they really don't say nothing then because now you, they feel like you're helping fund uh, their church or helping fund the vision. All right. So uh, that's not, you know, Elohim's original intent. Just get, just get people in church. Scripture says he wants all of us to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. All right. He wants us to uh, come into full illumination of who he is. All right. So getting back to it, the Messianic scriptures, what we see, they are uh, a revelation of the Tanakh. OK. All right. It, when we got uh, the revelation script, uh, I'm sorry, the Messianic scriptures, uh, Sheol, uh, who many call Paul, when he wrote them, uh, he did not write them to say to separate uh, what was going on in the Tanakh. Like I say, the, the Messianic scriptures are just a Tanakh reveal. I mean, Yeshua, when he was speaking to the religious leaders, he was telling them that uh, when he was talking about Tanakh, he was telling them that was him. He was the word. He was the living tabernacle. All right. So it, it, <laughs> that's all it is. It's just a revelation. You can get the understanding um, of a lot of stuff in the Messianic scriptures just from the Tanakh. But uh, what we have to do is we have to stay connected to that spirit of truth. All right. Um, now, we understand <laughs> the importance of origin. We understand the importance of uh, just the holy days and their purpose, and we, see, and we see the design and what the Father meant for these holy days or these holy uh, uh, feasts, you know, and, and they're not just for um, just going out and having fun. Um, we see how important they are and what occurred during these times. So the Father knew that um, he would set these in place for his people, you know. We're not supposed to use, you know, astrology uses the stars to tell people who they are, you know, that's a part of divination. So we're not supposed to the stars aren't supposed to tell us who we are and what we're supposed to do, but uh, we're supposed to use astronomy to see uh, or be able to understand what's coming. All right. Um, and just like, you know, uh, our shepherd has our chief shepherd has been teaching us about um, that. The signs of the times and their sword coming over America is letting us know what's what's about to happen. All right. The father doesn't want to hide anything from his people. The people who have things hidden from them, you know, one is can somebody give me um, that answer? The father will keep stuff from people who are lazy. What's lazy. another one? Lazy, foolish, and slothful. There's one more I'm looking for. Unregenerated. Unregenerated. Yeah, there's uh, one more I'm looking for. Ignorant. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's that's, right. that's it. <laughs> that's the one out. Those who, who uh, lack knowledge. You know, it, scripture said, he said, my people are cut off from, um, are cut off because of a lack of knowledge. All right. Um, because that's why I say we have to have the, the attitude of a scholar. You know, are we coming home and just, you know, watching TV? I want to unwind. I want to do this. You know, we should have that. You know, when you're listening to uh, what Dr. Larry is teaching, go back and study for yourself. Go back and, you know, have your own study time, because then that allows us to receive illumination. And that way we won't be in the dark when things are occurring. You know, I didn't expect this. I didn't know this was coming. I didn't know this. The father doesn't want to keep anything from those who have a heart to want to know. Uh, him and his ways. All right. So now we're getting back to the origin of things. Let's go ahead and get into the origin of Halloween. All right. So uh, origin, the tradition. Well, I'll let somebody else read. Anybody want to go ahead and read this other than Ella? I know Ella been reading a lot. <laughs> anybody else? Okay. Um, origin, the tradition originated with the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. This day marked the end of the sum of summer and the harvest and the beginning of the dark, cold winter, a time of the year that was often associated with human death. Celts believed that on the night before the new year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated 
See what I mean? When it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to earth. All right. So we see that um, with the Celtic festival, um, that what was going on was they were honoring or commemorating the dead. All right. And so um, this is this is the origin of Halloween. This is where it comes from. All right. And I believe this originated in Ireland. OK, so um, we don't see anything here was going back to, you know, what the Holy Spirit instituted. We don't see anything here where the father instituted this. Do we see anything about it being a more deed or divine appointed time? Do we see that anywhere? I don't see it either. All right. So um, let's go ahead and keep reading. Can you read the rest of it for us? What's the root? After the harvest work was complete, celebrants joined with Druid priests to light a community fire using a wheel that would cause friction and spark flames. The wheel was considered a representation of the sun and used along with the prayers. Cattle were sacrificed and participants took a flame from the communal bonfire back to their home to relight the herd. Early texts present Samhain as a mandatory celebration lasting three days and three nights where the community was required to show show themselves to local kings or chiefs. Uh, failure to participate was believed to result in punishment from the gods, usually illness or death. Traditions from man, the Celtic people. All right, so we see uh, that a lot of these uh, traditions um, can actually be uh, try to be a direct copycat. All right, because again, this was during at the end of the summer. What, what else occurs during the end of the summer or the hot days? Exactly. Yep. Yes. We just, <laughs> you know, that, that celebration, you know, we just, that we just, we're just coming out of, that's what, you know, it was. So we see here a, a copycat, but we're going to get to that as well. So um, when we're looking at it, we have to see how, um, just these celebrations, how they try to paint themselves, all right? And you see here that it had, uh, what should I say? It had uh, traditions that you were supposed to keep in it, like exact things that you would do, all right? And these things here were representation, you know, see a representation of the sun, all right? And used along with prayers, all right? So with that being said, we see here idol worship, <laughs> okay? Uh, and all of this is in the origin of Halloween. All right. You know, I, we hadn't even got to the candy and trick or treat and all of that yet. You know, we getting back to how it started. You know, we hadn't got back to it. And, you know, if you present this information to somebody, they'll just look at you like look at you like you're crazy. But the thing is, as um, kingdom citizens, you know, we're here to be separated. We're here to represent a different government, a different culture. You know, we're here to. Um, be the example of the representation in earth of uh, who the father originally designed his people uh, to be. That's what we're, we're uh, striving to get to every day by living out of our spirits, all right? Because we know now that our, uh, our minds are being renewed by um, basically choosing to change every day uh, because we're living out of our spirit. We now have that attitude to when we receive truth that we change. Now it's those who reject truth what are they in line for? What sets up somebody who rejects truth? What does it set them up for? Failure. Yeah. Say it one more time. Separation Failure. or death. No, nah, that's not what I'm looking for. Somebody who rejects truth, what does it set them up for? Destruction. Yeah. It, um, no, I was gonna say the kingdom of darkness, but someone who rejects the truth. We just got out of the series. Seducing spirits. Spirits. Deception. And exactly. Oh. It sets them up for deception. <laughs> All right. So um, so when we don't want to be, you know, deceived, deceived. And uh, we know that if you want to keep participating in that lie, you want to continue accepting that lie, even though you've been, been presented with truth, just because the lie seems easier and more comfortable, then we know that the father will give you over to a reprobated mind. <laughs> so we try to make sure that we're not in those conditions. All right. 
somebody read this last slide for me and see who were the uh, Celtic people? Who were the Celtic people? A people that traveled through Southern Europe. Romans tried to conquer them, but failed. The Catholic Church included many Celtic traditions. All right. Uh, keep reading for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go to the next one here. Halloween is celebrated today. Hold on, Audrey. I'm sorry. I don't. Let me pull this slide up. I don't have it here. I'll pull it up here. You know what? I'll just read it. Um, I added in a slide. So, let me, all right, so the other one, this is the origin of Halloween continued. Uh, the Catholic Church, uh, per, Pope Gregory I, also known as St. Gregory the Great, who headed the church from AD 590 to 604, advised a missionary going to England that instead of trying to, uh, instead of trying to do away with the religious customs of non-Christian peoples, they simply should convert them to a Christian religious purpose, all right? Pope Gregory III later expanded the festival to include all saints as well as all martyrs and moved the observant from May 13th to November 1st, all right? Media created images of community and friendly celebrations to break the tie with witchcraft on Halloween to encourage parents to celebrate, okay? Um, now, I don't know if you all know this, but in order to ward off or scare off the, the spears, one thing that they would do is they would put on uh, the mask. So they would put on these, these frightening masks and they would try to scare off these spears. You know, that's why, you know, uh, that's where the dressing or the costumes come from. Um, all right. And so what we want to look at is how is Halloween celebrated today? Can you continue reading for me, Audrey, if you don't mind? Or yell to Audrey. Yes. Um, going a souling today is trick or treating. During the festivities, poor citizens with bags of food and families will give them pastries called soul cakes in return for their promise to pray for the family's dead relatives. Trick or treating today is a traditional Halloween custom for children and adults in some countries. In the evening before All Saints Day, the 1st of November, Children in costumes travel from house to house asking for treats with the, per with the phrase trick or treat. The treat is usually some form of candy, although in some cultures, money is given instead. All right. So <laughs> what we see here is that uh, what we're looking at now is just the how it's been converted. You know how we saw how it started out in its origin. Now we see how it's been more so converted into um, a, our government, you know, it's a governmental holiday that, that, that's celebrated. Um, not saying that you get off of work for it, but I'm just saying as a nation, uh, America does it, all right? And we see that it started um, with the transition of it becoming popular through uh, the Christian faith, uh, or I should say the Christian religion. I'm sorry, let me say that. And it was done by the Catholic Church, Pope Gregory, all right? And he advised um, a missionary to go to England. And instead of doing away with the religious custom, we see that he was like, you know, you all, same thing with Constantine. That's why you have to check out Origin, excuse me, because you will see the same thing repeat itself. Uh, when it came to Constantine, instead of him doing away with, uh, what was it, Christmas? Or I'm sorry, the, the winter solstice, you know, it, it was converted to Christmas. And that's when many people celebrate uh, Yeshua's birthday or, or his birth, all right? And then we see here with, with Pope Gregory, uh, what they have now, uh, when they introduce Halloween, uh, they converted it to All Saints Day on November 1st. Now, what you have is All Hallows Eve or All Saints Eve uh, occurring on October 31st, all right? And so we see here that it was a Roman Catholic 
Pope that did it, you know, that derives from that Roman Catholic Christian religion. They had the ideas of compromising within the religion and continued it from, you know, just that uh, that Christmas holiday to now the uh, Halloween or All Saints Day, how it's now been converted into Halloween. All right. And so uh, because this was originally a pagan tradition, all right? And so, you know, that's where they get the trick-or-treating from. You know, they would offer up the, they, they would give people treats for prayers because they thought at that time it was the thinnest uh, when, when they could pray and get people, what should I say, the spiritual realm was the thinnest and they could pray and get people uh, to, to heaven, you know, that that's what they were thinking. So this, all of this has everything to do with uh, the origin in a day that was uh, co commemorated or assigned or developed, let me say that by uh, a Roman, by the Roman Catholic Church under the head of a pope. All right, again, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. We don't find this in Scripture. You know, and some people will say it's good that they're doing All Saints Day, or even that you know, with Halloween going on today, that it is good for the children. That the children are now able to do, it and they still have fun. Let, let's do this and. And do that so and we see the way that it's celebrated today by again just giving out candy you know they, they say that that's harmless that's this and that's that um but one thing about halloween today is that it's also a time um when what is let me see we see that their focus is who when it comes to halloween children Exactly. And who goes missing during Halloween the most? Around Halloween, let me say that. A lot of children. children. Children do. Um, because <laughs> the, the thing about it is that the old serpent knows that if he can get the children, you know, even with the planning of Halloween or even we know what, <laughs> what's going on during this time of Halloween, whether, you know, the, they're out there actually trying to sacrifice children. Um, what the enemy has his plan to do because he knows that if he can get the children and then get them in a place to compromise at an early age, that they'll do it into adulthood. All right, so let's see how, you know, people say, Christians say that they're not Catholics today. People will say that, you know, they, um, they are diehard Baptist, diehard Kojic, diehard uh, apostolic, Die hard. I can't think of another denomination. Uh, Southern Baptist. Uh, what's another? Lutheran. Uh, what's another one? Um, trying to think of all of them. I can't right now. But <laughs> let's go to the next one. Uh, and let's just see how uh, Halloween is celebrated in traditional churches. All right. So what we have here is that many cr church Christian churches today do not celebrate Halloween, but rather what do they call it? a fall festival, okay? Or you even see another one that, they, you know, right here, they call it trunk or treat, or they do things, and, you know, I did it growing up. You wear the, the non-threatening costumes, you know, cowboys, Power Rangers. Uh, you know, you dress in this attire that's just friendly to, you know, child-friendly, okay? Again, we're trying to conform everything to the children so that they can have a fun time, so that they can do this, and, and they can have uh, this memory or, or do that, you know? A lot of it has to do with um, basically allowing uh, the child to have a say of what's going on rather than the Holy Spirit. And we know that that's totally out of order. All right. And, you know, we see the hayrise, the, the pumpkin carving. A lot of people say this is great for fellowship. That's what they say. Uh, this is a great time for fellowship. It's a great time. You know, it, uh, what one pastor actually told me, and he said this about valentine's he was like it's a tool you know that's what he said he said that the holidays are a tool to get uh people to uh do certain things but i'm to me that is a form of manipulation or witchcraft because uh you're trying to use tactics or you're trying to use um different ideas that didn't come from the holy spirit you know uh it's not up for us to draw people you know that's the holy spirit job the the thing that we do as people is that we represent uh, the kingdom of heaven, you know, the, the thing that we do, we give them, uh, it talks about the, the, you know, the, the pastors, the, uh, the emissaries, the teachers, the, um, who else is it, the prophets, that they are actually there 
to equip the uh, Elohim's people. It, it didn't say anything about them using uh, holidays in order to draw people to uh, be saved, to draw people to uh, come into the knowledge of the truth, all right? Um, so these are our ideas that um, people come up with so that they can actually get people into their church, all right? It has nothing to do with what the father originally wants to do. That's why it's so important to understand kingdom culture. That way we can actually live it out the, the way that the father originally designed. And, you know, when we, um, when we actually uh, have that idea that we're supposed to live it out on heaven, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to make earth just like heaven. That's what Adam was to do. You know, that's what uh, Yeshua did. All right. Um, he had that culture on him and he showed that he was able to live uh, out the kingdom mandate and he showed it to us and one of the things that Yeshua did was that he didn't compromise you know when uh who was it that came to him when the old serpent came to him and I have this we're gonna get to that too but Yeshua didn't give in all right he stood on the word okay and let's look at you know because with standing on the word the thing is is that many people um, they may do it but and do it in a religious fashion. Um, but when we stand on the word, we want to do it with understanding. All right. We don't want to live out the word based on translators ideas. Then, you know, we stuck at the hands of religion. We stuck at the hands of translator translators or dead man's thoughts. Okay. So we got an understanding of the origin of Halloween, how it celebrates today, how, uh, Christian churches are using it. Now let's look at, you know, um, because the government or, you know, any world secular government needs needs religion in order to control the people. So what is the main focus for any world system or government? What are they after? Can anybody answer that? Dollar bill. Exactly. They after money. <laughs> so um, I didn't even know I had it up. So how lucrative is Halloween? Uh, can somebody read this for me? Money spending on Halloween related items is expected to reach an all time high of 10.14 billion, up from 8.505 billion in 2020, according to the National Retail Federation's annual survey conducted by Prosper Insights and Analytics. The National Retail Federation found that in 2020, consumers planned to spend an average of $997.79 on gifts and other holiday items. Quite a pretty penny when you consider that the median weekly salary in the US at that time was $944 before taxes, 188.2 billion in 2020. Mm. All right, so now we see that the government isn't pushing Halloween just so that people can have fun. We see that uh, that's why I say it was a governmental holiday, because we see now that uh, it's being pushed because it's lucrative. It is it's circulating money, you know. Um, and so a, a lot of big businesses, you know, they're making money off of Halloween. You know, you got to get people to spend money in order for the government to make money. All right. So uh, let's look at Matthew, Yahoo, Matthew 4 and 8. Uh, I have it here. I'll just read it. Um, and. Again, the old serpent took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. So we see here that the old serpent was trying to tempt Yeshua, tempt the, tempt the word, the very one uh, who created, <laughs> you know, the earth, you know, trying to give him something that he created and tell him, you know, he was going to give it to him, give him all the kingdoms, get, make him rich beyond imagination. All right. So we see here that during this time that uh, Yeshua told the old serpent to, to leave, to get out. You know, uh, when Yeshua was tempted in the other areas, we see that he stood on the word. All right. That there was no, there was no compromising for Yeshua. He didn't say, you know what, Satan, let's go ahead and, and make that happen. You know, you take this part of the world, I'll take that. You know, he, he didn't do that. He didn't compromise in any form or fashion. So everything that we should do today should be in a non-compromising state. You know, we don't want to give into these ideas that will put us in a state of walking in disobedience, put us in a state of walking in deception, put us in a state and give us minds that will separate us from uh, what the Holy Spirit 
really wants us to do the, in the earth, you know, because uh, we're a vessel of, you know, for the Holy Spirit. All right. And we don't want to be criminals. <laughs> you know, we don't want to be lawbreakers. You know, we could be cutting ourselves off from the things not I'm not talking about just in prosperity, what the father has for us, but we could be cutting ourselves off from him using us to help deliver somebody else. All right. Because we're compromising, because if they if they see you doing it, that person saying it, it's OK. You know, if you celebrate Halloween, you doing it. What's different from them going out and getting drunk and doing the same thing? Because, you know, that's all that's going on uh, during Halloween and, and all these parties is people just getting drunk, having fun and doing who else you know knows what. So, it, you know, if we participate or are doing the same thing, then what separates us from them? You know, um, and that's what we are to be in. Our, we're here to be. Uh, separate, unique, and whole, you know, that that's how we were created. So um, with that, we can look at, you know, the intent of Halloween, or, you know, originally I had a title, excuse me, the spirit of Halloween, but we know that the spirit and the intent are the same thing, all right? So the intent of Halloween is, to, is compromise. That, that's what it is. It's compromise. It's to create an avenue for deception, all right? And um, in Bereshit 3 and 13, uh, Elohim said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said that the Hajj deceived me and I ate. All right. So we see here that the old serpent deceived uh, Masa Izanigad. All right. Told her, you know, got her offended and, and felt like, you know, Elohim was keeping something from, from her that she wasn't like Elohim. And so... Uh, she was like, well, what else could there be? You know, what else can I offer? And the same thing with our children. It, you know, if, if you teach your child uh, about keeping the feast days, you know, you take them through um, the kingdom. Uh, what should I say? The, the kingdom teaching it as far as uh, being um, an ambassador in the earth. You explain to them the importance of it, all of that. And then, you know, you set them on the right path, but then they go off and they decide, well, you kept Halloween from me. You kept Christmas from me. You kept uh what's another one you kept um going out to these late night parties from me. you kept me from instead of you know you tried to put a, a a skill a trade in my hand but you know i wanted to hang out with my friends on the weekends i wanted to do this you know you kept all this from me and the kids can get offended and the kids say you know because you kept all this from me now i'm gonna go do it now what they will accept or inherit is not life which the father gives now they can accept and inherit death which which is separation from the father i hope that all makes sense all right. So um, and we know we already answered this question. Who are the main victims or targets for the enemy around this time of year? And we, we said it was it was the children. So what we see is, is that when we are putting ourselves in position to uh, celebrate uh, Halloween is that uh, we're actually operating in the wheel of the old serpent. The wheel of the old serpent is he's a copycat. And here in uh, Yahashua, I mean, Yeshaya, Yeshaya, I'm sorry. Uh, 14 and 14, let me go up above the heights of the clouds. Let me be like the most high. So the, the Elohim has his holy divine appointed times, his more deed. And the old serpent said, okay, let me have mine. All right. And so now, you know, what occurs during these days is that uh, things that he, uh, that the old serpent commemorates or that he pushes for, which is uh, putting ourselves in a, a delusional state drugs alcohol um putting ourselves um in a position to where we can introduce ourselves to these uh this seducing spirits you know putting ourselves in a state to where we're open to rebellion you know uh to where we're operating as a criminal you know that's what the old serpent wants he creates a pathway on his days to do that what i mean the whole purpose of Sukkot. Uh, or the Feast of Tabernacle was to co uh, commemorate when, you know, Yeshua came into the earth, you know, that he became, the word um, became flesh and dwelt among us, all right? That's what his purpose is for, is to uh, represent, you know, a representation or I should say the illumination of what he came to do in the earth and to uh, show us how to live out the word as well. You know, the very word himself came and showed us how to do it. And then when he left, he gave us the advocate, the governor, the Holy Spirit during the, the time of Shavuot so that we could get back in our rightful position. And now we have the governor in us uh, who will help us do the same thing that he did. The father never wanted us to be separated from him. You know, when Adam messed up, the father said, OK, 
I'm gonna give my people another way back to me. I'm gonna give my people another way to live this thing out right. And you know, that's why um uh, we uh Yeshua was the, the first fruit, you know, when he was offered up because he was the first one to do it right. All right. And then we have that opportunity now to do the same thing. And you know, it was uh Yokanon who uh, who said he wasn't the Kingsman Redeemer. Um it, I'm uh it was Yeshua that had to do it. And so by Yeshua doing that, uh he uh, by his legal right, uh, was able to, uh, you know, when he went down hell, he was illegal, but in his legal right, he was able to basically operate in a manner that shows us who we are in the earth. There's no, uh, there should be no question of who you are and what you're supposed to do, because we have a living example, a blueprint that we can see in the messianic scriptures. Now, the thing what it takes for us to do is to learn the keys that he basically gave to us so that we can apply them to our lives. And once we do that, then we're walking in full understanding. We're walking in, walking in the anointing. All right. And there's one thing about uh, the people that the father uh, has for us and and that is for us to live a life uh more uh abundantly you know when he says more abundantly uh he can't give us life more abundantly you know he wanted us to have good lives i mean y- you know that's it and then when we're being representatives of him you know he doesn't want any of us to be broke busted disgusted all right so we have to make up in our minds who is it that you know we're going to live for we have to make up in our minds what we're going to choose to do. And it first starts, you know, in our thinking. And then we have to basically follow that up, not just by what we do, you know, not just by what we say. Um, but, you know, we have to uh, get in the word and we have to study, you know, so that we can show ourselves approved. And, you know, going back to the origin it is a form of studying truth. All right. And so in order to uh, get back in uh, the word and study, you know, we have to have the attitude of a scholar and check things out for ourselves and what that will become will become a lifestyle all right uh we'll have that 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 idea that you know we can be a student or the attitude of a student and that that is something that we're always looking to accept is ideas from heaven and we'll be open to receive you know scripture says that if any man have an ear let him hear all right so the father wants us to not only hear what he's saying but he wants us, us to have a heart that is pliable for his will all right and so what we have to do, you know, get into that, um, not trying to go too fast, um, but we have to, like I say, we have to break free from the deception of Halloween. We have to always exchange ideas, um, always exchange, I'm sorry, lies for truth, because truth is original. Our spirits are just like Elohim, okay? The spirit of truth is the only way to truth. There are, you know, there's no other way to truth, except through the spirit of truth, all right? Uh, the word is the truth communicated from the source to the receiver, okay? That's what we have. When you get, get back to the original language, what you're getting, what you're unraveling is truth. And that was uh, communicated from the source. That's why we say, you know, this was, a, that's what comes from the Holy Spirit, the origin, you know, not what comes from the translators, all right? And the word of truth cannot be understood apart from the spirit of truth. You cannot separate uh, the two, all right? If you're saying you're receiving something and you're not actually um, and it doesn't agree with the word or, you know, you're reading the word and it doesn't agree with what the Holy Spirit is saying, then somewhere there, there's a disconnect. And oftentimes it's because of a misconception. All right. I hope that this word um, has truly blessed you all. If uh, you all have enjoyed um, the, the teaching tonight, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, please catch us. Um, every uh thursday at uh 7 30 i believe and uh on saturdays and uh sundays the time may vary but just check if you subscribe and you hit that notification bell you'll be notified when we come on all right shalom <laughs>